Alrighty, in today's tutorial, what we're going to be looking to do is to build a little sort of scoreboard and then make our game seem a little bit better in terms of its overall appeal to people by adding in a very simple element related to our score. And then also when we collect our score, uh, we're gonna have it so that it makes a sound effect um, similar to what happens in Mario, I guess, when you collect the coin. So obviously that's gonna allow us to then start to add some of the elements that we've learned in other videos, like shooting enemies, like having a um, lives tracker up the top and then things related to our level design uh, and our movement uh, to really make our game start to feel quite immersive, which is gonna be quite good. So obviously that's what we're trying to do by the end of this whole game development course is to start to put all of the pieces together uh, and then mix them into one game with a particular theme. Okay, so here we are over in Scratch and it's time to look at how we're gonna build our little scoreboard. Uh, I'm gonna keep things super simple in this one and not build anything too elaborate. We're just gonna use the variable as the scoreboard. So let's get that set up uh, straight away. So let's start with a variable. We're just gonna click make a variable and call it score. Okay, that's gonna be our scoreboard, but we're gonna add some sound and some collection and stuff like that. And that's how we're gonna uh, get around this one here. So starting with our cat, we need to obviously make sure that we can get him to move around. So basically some standard code. We're just gonna drop in a when green flag is clicked, come into the motion menu, set our rotation style to be only left and right so that that way he'll only uh, yeah, he'll always be feet down at the bottom there. And then we want a forever loop. So we're gonna grab that one. And then we want our four if statements. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, four if statements for the four different buttons. And then we wanna come into our sensing menu and grab four of these guys here, the key one. So we're gonna space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar, because we're gonna change those to up then down then right then left all right and then we're going to build some super easy code here where we're just going to say motion and we might have a change x by 10 there and a change x by negative 10 here and a change y and change y by negative 10. All right so remember the down is going to be negative the left is going to be negative and when we press play our scratch cat is going to move around when we hit the different buttons on the keyboard. So that's really good and that's sorted. Now we need something for our scratch cat to collect. This game's going to be sort of a little bit similar to the clown game if you followed along with that. Um, so we're going to add a coin of some sort. So let's have a quick look. Scratch doesn't have a built-in coin. That's okay. Like we could go to an another website and download something um to get a sprite that we want but for now let's maybe just grab this ball except we're obviously not going to change its color so we have our ball sitting over here all right and our ball is going to have uh some code i'm going to keep creating clones on that one and then use some sounds so to start with let's get our ball set up in the state that we want so let's go uh control no which one events there's we go green flag and then we want to change the size so let's try and work out what we want let's go 50 percent just to see how big that is that's a little bit small let's make it 75. there we go cool so we've got like a fairly decent sized sprite sitting there and then because we're going to create clones we want to hide our original shape straight away and then create our forever loop that's gonna keep creating clones over and over and over again. So forever, create a clone of myself, and then we might wait 1.5 seconds. Uh, let's make it two. Okay, so this time when we press play, we're gonna get nothing appear, of course, because we told it to hide and we haven't told it to show. So we need to go and get some extra code. So when our clone starts up, the first thing we want it to do is go to a random place on the screen so that it uh, is, you know, harder to collect. So let's say go to, and then instead of X and Y and setting some specific coordinates, we're going to come into operators, grab our pick random, drop one of those in the X and one of those in the Y. And for our X one, we might just go 150 to negative 150. And for our Y, 220 negative 220 all right and then from there we might just tell it that we can see it where are we show 
Okay, so now what we should get is a coin appear on screen and then another one and another one somewhere randomly. Okay, it's just going to completely keep putting them all in different places. So that's good. Next thing we need to do is make it so that our clone um, will go away and when we hit it. So actually, no, we'll do that one a little bit later. What we might do is we might quickly set up some code so that our clone will delete itself if we don't collect it too soon. Okay, so we're going to jump into control and we're going to have a forever loop because we need this one to last for a few seconds. And then inside that forever loop, we're going to just very quickly drop in a wait two seconds and then delete this clone. All right, so now what we get instead is our thing will appear and then it goes away. Let's make it 2.5 so that we can have two coins on screen at the same time. The next one should appear and then that one will delete. Awesome. So that's got that working perfectly. And now we just need some code that's going to get our scratch cat to collect the coin, play a sound and then change the score as well. So let's have a look at how we would do that. First things first, obviously when we start as a clone, we need this code to work. And then from there, we're just going to create a forever loop that says if we are touching the cat, the cat remember is sprite number one. Okay, you can see the name there. So if it's touching sprite number one, we want you to play a sound. Now, I don't really know what Scratch has got in here. Play sound until done. So we've got, what do we got? Pop and boing or record. Okay, uh, I don't want to record my own sound, uh, but I can show you how to do that anyway. But if we, whoa, uh, if we quickly, show you that again okay this time with my desktop audio turned on when we collect the coin okay it's gonna like rapid fire that noise uh, over and over again obviously we don't want that to happen we only want the sound to play once so this is where we're gonna need to do a couple of things we want to change our variable of score by 10 okay and then we want to delete the clone Okay, now the reason we have to do it in that order is because the delete clone one, we can't add any code to the end of that. So that's why we, I knew we had to put that one last. So now what we get instead is we get just a simple little pop sound each time um, that goes in. Okay, let's see what the boing one sounds like and see if that's any better. No, that's terrible. Not, not, for, not for this purpose. Okay, so we're going to keep that one as pop. If you do click the record button down here, what it will do is you press record on the, the button. Well, let's have a quick go. Ka-ching! I'm not even going to listen to it again. Let's just play that. Okay, and then we're going to change this one to recording one. This time we get... That's terrible. We're going back to pop. Okay, uh, so that's how you would record your own sound. I definitely do not want to hear myself say ka-ching over and over and over again. But in terms of something very simple and easy to make our game seem a little bit more immersive, including a scoreboard of some sort up at the top and then playing some sort of sound effect uh, is always really good. So one thing you could obviously look to do is if you had your uh, cat set up and had like a jumping mechanic, you could add like every time the up button was pressed. This is going to be awful. Um, time the button was pressed. Oh, he has more sounds. He would say meow because we don't have the boing sound anymore. Okay, I don't, never, never again. All right, so that's it. Uh, this lesson, very, very quick and easy one. You've got that little bit of code sitting here on your cat that moves it around. This code should look very familiar um, and you should be able to implement that pretty much wherever you go if you're not doing gravity. And then on our ball, we have our uh, size setting and our loop that clones itself every two seconds. Whenever it starts up as a clone, uh, it's gonna move to a random spot on the screen and then stay around for two and a half seconds before deleting. And then finally, we have our code that plays the sound whenever we touch the sprite and changes the score. So that's it for today. Hopefully you have enjoyed that little super quick lesson about how to add sound effects to your game and how to add some score elements as well without doing anything too complex. Uh, just a reminder, obviously, if you do wanna upload your own sprites, you can do that. If you go and download them from another website, just make sure that they are not 
uh, infringing on any sort of copyright. And you can, you can also do the same sort of thing with your sound effects as well. So that's it for today. I hope to see you over in another Scratch tutorial soon.